The way I see it, if you have more of a visual comprehension of your surroundings, then you're able to take in all the information that you need a lot more efficiently. Hi. We're gonna do this a little bit differently than I've done before. I'm gonna go at this with a more loosely formatted structure. I've been trying to keep more of a formal tone, thought that might be a little more professional, but how should I say this? I don't care about being professional. When you create your own work, a visual art, you're just, what's the word? What's the phrase? You control what happens. You don't let any outside forces that are unwanted control how you create that piece, yeah? So I figured the same thing with the video. I do technically whatever I want. That includes saying fuck also, Van Gogh, and stuff. So I was originally intending on this being a rendition of the Madonna and Child, but I thought more on it. I don't think that I'm at the point where I'm ready to do that. I feel like that's like a benchmark stage in an artist's career. It seems like a really big deal in both a religious sense and also in a fine art sense. They can be separate, they can be together, I don't know, it depends on what you believe. Maybe this is just me taking too many art history classes where I've seen just so many Madonna and Child. It's just the way that they work. I figured I'd do a sketch of my brother. I already did one in the third Cubism sketchbook. It looked pretty good. It certainly looked more developed than the Madonna and Child. So yeah, that just sat better with me. Plus I've been meaning to do a portrait of my brother for a while, but I know that I could do this in a non-committal way because of the relationship that I have with him. If I were to do it with anyone else, then I would feel this pressure of getting their essence correct. But here, there's no pressure really. I mean, we've known each other all, basically all of our lives. So by the first layer, I had already known that I had made the right decision. It was just so smooth. It was clean beyond compare. It was... I'm just blowing it out of proportion. It definitely was one of the smoothest first layers that I've ever done. We're talking about quick and clean and done in one night and with no frustration. You know you're in a good spot in a piece when the first layer is not frustrating or aggravating in any way, shape, or form. So I wasn't too sure what to do for color. Yeah, that was quite puzzling, to be honest. I figured blue would be a safe thing to go for for the first layer. I've used it many times. It was neutral for this case. Now that is not to say that blue is a neutral color because Exhibit A. That dude used blue when he was depressed out of his Caravaggio mind. Of course, he kind of had it coming, but you know, whatever. So my brother's favorite color is blue. Light blue to be specific. When I first asked him why it was his favorite color, he said that it was the warmest, cool color. Now, as interesting a reasoning as that is, unfortunately, blue is not the warmest, cool color. That, I would say, is like like a light violet-ish, even then that's kind of pushing it. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna do a whole video on color, temperature, but I don't know when I'm gonna do that. Who knows, I would like to be more adept in color temperature knowledge. That will come in time. So sorry to burst your bubble, my guy. However, when I confronted him with this, he still said it was his favorite color, and I mean, why not? Blue's cool. But I didn't want to just do blue. So then I asked my brother what kind of colors he associated with comfort and home. And he said purple. And I said interesting, because that just works perfectly. So purple it was for the background. Now, the blue, the light blue coming from the eyes. I'm gonna give you a little bit more backstory on this. The Mesopotamian creation story. I'm not gonna go over the whole story because there's only a couple things in there that pertain to this video, but I will give the rundown and talk about the bits that matter here more in detail. There were once two master deities for all intents and purposes. They had a bunch of kids. Those kids got rowdy and they killed their dad and tried to live inside his corpse. That did not sit well with the mother. So mother got angry, set loose a bunch of monsters on the gods. The gods got real scared. They're backed up in a corner. They start sending out gods to try and fight the monsters. Everyone keeps on losing. They create a god named Marduk. Marduk is the protagonist in this story. Marduk has eyes going all around his head and he can speak magic words. I should make the point that the eyes going around his head are not important. It's what he did with those eyes that matter. He could observe and contemplate his surroundings. The gods realized how unique he was in comparison to themselves. They told him that he should 
conquer the army of monsters and save them. He said he would do it, but only if they made him king of the gods and if he acquired the Tablet of Destiny. The Tablet of Destiny. It should be thought of more so as a metaphorical way of displaying the ability to plan ahead, not so much as a literal tool to tell the future. With the tablet, he could see all the possible outcomes of any given situation. With those tools at his disposal, he was able to prevail against the monstrous army and the mother deity. So to sum it all up, he defeats the army of monsters, he defeats the mother deity, and he creates the world out of her. And that's the Mesopotamian creation story. I believe this is why the eyes are the only light source and such a significant element of the composition. If you don't have ample wisdom and foresight, it is unlikely you will be able to shed light upon your environment and see the opportunity in the obstacles that you face. It's something that I had been trying to play guessing games with throughout the entire making of the previous piece. I think now I've figured out the reason why, or at least give it one answer. And now we come back to the purple. Purple for comfort, purple for home. The subject may be surrounded in darkness. Some would say the light is bright, and some would say it is meek in comparison to the dark. But look at that darkness. It's not a cold, endless, pitch black space. It's warm and welcoming purple. No matter if you think the light is bright or dim, the subject is not being consumed by the unknown or attempting to escape. He sits still and gazes at the viewer. An air of tamed confidence rests with him. Having immersed himself in the darkness, he has ripped the intimidating factor from the unknown, making the task of creating a life out of the madness less daunting than it might have been before. Ha ha ha. Ah. Or that's how it should have gone. But I definitely put an extra coat on the background that I definitely did not need, resulting in the purple being almost unrecognizable unless you just look really, really closely in person, which none of you guys can do right now. Oh well, lesson learned. Ease it up on the layers next time. When I made the first piece, I had no clue what it was. It did not look like a portrait, which was the original intent, but I was still fascinated with the result. I think I've opened up a few doorways on how to proceed with this. But as I bring this to a close, I want to ask you guys what you think. What do you guys think when you see this? What do you see when you look at this? Is it a piece of Francis Bacon? Should I trade it for Chipotle? Does it cause boredom? Does it make you want to switch sides in the election? I want to know any of these things and more. Does it deserve lighter fluid? Does it do anything? If there is a reaction that is produced when you look at it, I want to know about it. It's very fascinating to me. Tell me what you think.